Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to Minecraft RTX Survival. I hope you guys are having a good day. In today's episode, I think we are going to make a separate storage system from the house. Much as I love the house, I've just found it a little bit tedious going through here, getting to this storage, and then not really having a whole lot of room for expansion, to be honest with you. I think the RTX series also has the capacity to do some cool stuff with the way we organize our storage, and so I thought it was a prime opportunity to do something a little bit different with this series. I think we're going to have a separate storage building, and we're probably going to do that underground, somewhere in this area. I think somewhere near here seems like a good idea. We can dig out a large area, get ourselves a bunch of materials, and then I want to use what we were doing in the last episode with colored glass, which I still have a whole bunch of here in my inventory, and it's a little difficult to see without the glass borders, but there we go. I think we got most of it. There's a black stained glass there. There we go. I think I want to organize my storage by color, and this is something that I've been considering doing in my main series for a while, but it never really quite felt like the right thing to do. I normally categorize stuff by the types of items, you know, wood in one chest, stone in another chest, and then obviously as you acquire more resources throughout the course of a series, you tend to put all cobblestone, all, you know, regular natural stone, all kind of bulk resources will go in certain chests. So I think this time around, because of the colourful nature of the RTX series, the fact that we're working more with coloured light and everything like that, and we were looking at how each material reacts to different light sources on it, I think it makes a lot more sense to organise the storage this time by colour. And this is obviously going to lead to some strange categorizations of blocks. For example, grass as a block has a very green top texture, but brown on all of the other faces. I'm still going to put it in as a green block though, because when you think of grass, you think of green. And if I'm looking for stuff in my storage system later, I would probably go to the green chest before the brown chest when I was looking for grass blocks. So we're going to do a couple of, you know, sneaky categorizations like that. But I think most of the items in Minecraft can typically be broken down into the 16 colors that we have available to us here. Like sand can go in yellow, gravel can go in the light gray chest, you know, there can be various bits and pieces obviously quartz can go with white sea lanterns could go with white as well because they're a light source you know we, we can we can work on a lot of this stuff as we go but i think we at least have the foundations for a pretty good color coordinated system not to mention the fact that we can light every single row of colored chests with sea lanterns and colored glass to get the results that we want and to illuminate each area in a different color i think that'd be a really fun way to organize this so i think we're going to make some concrete we're going to dig out an area down here and we're going to start color coordinating our storage all right after a little bit of work i think i've managed to get myself one storage module set up the way i want it plus of course the entrance here which i think Kind of mirrors the theme of the house a little bit. It's got mostly dark oak and quartz instead of the white concrete because the quartz is a little bit more reflective and you get to see a little bit of the light bouncing off the walls in there as you come on down and as you look back up, you can also kind of see a little bit more of the daylight and the scene from the outside reflected there. And maybe we'll grow some trees around here or something so that maybe you can see a reflection of the trees as you ascend the staircase. But I like that. I think that looks pretty cool. Anyway, this is how I want to lay out each each of the storage modules in here. We've got 15 double chests per side, 30 chests total, and I think this looks really cool actually. We've got these red lights providing actually a fairly soft glow to the area because of the white light at the back and then potentially the white light here in the corridor is doing a little bit to kind of soften it as well. At first this was a lot kind of deeper red, but then obviously the white blends in, the reflectivity of the quartz kicks in and you start to see a little bit less of that. Still got some very red looking chests here on either side and of course yeah sea lanterns behind the stained glass providing all of that red light. Red concrete at the back there and a couple of dark oak stairs which I might vary up the stair material depending on the color if it goes better to have birch with green or something like that I might give that a go but I think that's all it's all looking pretty nice and now I have to do that 16 more times to finish out the rest of this storage system but it's going to be worth it because then I can start to move some of the building supplies and stuff out of the house and into a location like this we need to figure out some sort of surround for this maybe so that creepers aren't just going to wander down into my storage system if I leave the night idle up here but I think for now at least this is a pretty good template to get started with let's work on a few more of these and see where we end up
So I'm just about to finish up the orange section here. I've got the back wall going in. We're just going to flood the rest of this concrete powder as it is in place so that, yeah, bits and pieces of that are going to turn into regular concrete as the water trickles down from the top there, floods the storage system a little bit, actually ends up flooding into that area there and no harm done to the rest of the build. So this is looking really nice. I really like this as a format. We obviously need to get a lot more chests in, but I do wonder how many orange items we're really going to find in the game. So aside from, you know, orange concrete powder and wool and the stuff that we're deliberately making orange, I don't think there are that many orange materials. I guess acacia would fall into this category potentially, but I don't know if I want to store all of the wood types together. And that got me thinking actually, because I actually want some of the materials to be a little bit more easily accessible as we come down the ramp. There's no point in having like wood and trees and stuff stored in bulk in here for easy access if easy access only happens most of the way down this corridor when we find brown. So I was thinking I might put brown closer to the entrance because that's where we're going to get wood and the kind of materials we would need more regularly. And then it occurred to me that I've not found a jungle yet in this world, so I have no means of making brown dye. So what I think I'm going to do is continue working on this area a little bit more kind of between clips. We're going to be doing a live stream at some point when I'm recording this, so I think what I'll probably end up doing is doing the rest of this on a stream. But also on that stream, I think I need to go out and find a jungle, because otherwise I'm going to have no means of getting the brown dye I need to complete this storage system and, I guess, get some more brown material on the go in future. I do have a couple of brown sheep, but those were naturally spawn then i don't believe we have any cocoa beans anywhere else in here i haven't found them in mine shaft chests or a dungeon or anything like that so i'm thinking we need to go on a bit of an adventure and we need to go track down a jungle i'm also going to need a lot more quartz for this project than i initially realized having brought a bunch of quartz back from the nether converting it into full blocks obviously means you never really have as much as you think and for each of these to be nice and clean and surrounded in smooth quartz on all sides i'm going to need to get myself a an easier source of quartz which is probably going to be trading with villagers the stonemason profession i believe gives you quartz on bedrock as well as java as the last couple of trades and as long as we can get some blocks of quartz we can smelt those down into the smooth quartz that we need and that'll be nice and easy much as i like getting the extra xp from quartz in the nether i am draining the local landscape around our nether portal of quartz quite quickly so i think we're going to have to establish a trading connection with a stonemason probably in that desert village which makes me think, yeah, maybe we should head back to the desert village and begin our exploration for a jungle from there. So I'm heading out on my nether path, and I don't have any gold armor on me right now, so if we run into any piglins on the way, they are potentially going to see me as something to attack. But in the meantime, I think we should be good just bridging our way out across the lava and headed out to that desert once again. And the desert is a good distance away, but having this nether portal connection is a lot easier. And I think we'll probably try and establish a nether portal connection to the jungle as well, because who knows, it may be many thousands of blocks are further out than the places I've already explored. But out here at the desert village, let's check in with some of the locals. We've got a Fletcher over here, we have a farmer over here. Is there a stonemason in the vicinity? Because if there is, we can potentially start trading with them. If not, I guess we'll have to just make one. Let's pop down a stone cutter here in the town center where as you can see i've already been crafting a few villager professions of my own looks like the sun is going down and everyone's going to their homes but we'll have to come back up in the morning and see if we've recruited a stonemason well i found this structure here which seems to be the cleric's abode and in this chest i got myself some more emeralds so that's actually really useful a bit of rotten flesh in there as well some of the stuff that i'm sure the cleric is keen to trade but are you the librarian you are okay great you're you're the guy who has a bookshelf trade but not the mending book there is a mending book trader here in town that we've gotten our other books from and these lot are all standing by their workstations like they're ready to trade so we could always get a few more sticks for the Fletchers, but I wonder if a stonemason is going to make himself known here pretty soon. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we've got one. There's our stonemason, and I guess we could trade for a few bricks, because bricks are always a little bit hard to come by, aren't they? Let's get some of those. Let's see what he's opening up. A stone trade. I brought a bunch of the stone that I just dug out so that we can trade a few stacks of that. It's not really going to go to waste too much, and 
okay, he buys quartz from me at expert level, so I'm hoping that maybe he'll be able to trade me some full quartz blocks. Once we get to that point, let's see how many we can get with the trades here. That should do. What's next on the list? Yes, there we go. We have a block of quartz trade right there, so we'll be able to unlock that at the next level. I think we could always buy some light blue terracotta, though. That seems like a decent trade. You know, as a builder, it always feels a little bit painful to trade away natural stone, but it's all going to be worth it if we get ourselves a few quartz blocks. Only one quartz block per emerald, though. That's a little bit steeper than I was expecting. And it doesn't look like we'd be able to get any more blocks because I don't believe the trades affect the blocks that they trade back to you for emeralds. It's just the prices that they give you this stuff for in the first place. So, yeah, it looks like we are going to have to really farm some emeralds if we want to get a lot of quartz this way. It's certainly a way of getting it renewably, though, which the nether, of course, is not unless we start bartering with piglins, which, I don't know, could be an alternative to you, but we will see. Anyway, from here we can head out to the Mesa, and as far as I'm aware, the typical rule of thumb is that Minecraft tends to generate biomes with similar temperatures next to each other. There are obviously exceptions to this because, of course, you can always find, like, a Mesa next to a frozen ocean, and sometimes snow plains bordering deserts and weird phenomena like that, but... Most of the time you'll find that they tend to group these things together in world generation. So I'm hoping that if I manage to float my way around the rest of this mesa, maybe find a desert beyond this, we could potentially run into a jungle somewhere out there in this landscape. So cross your fingers for me, folks. I'm on the way to find a jungle and I'll bring you guys back in when hopefully we found one. Oh, finally. <laughs> full, full disclosure here, I ended up using Chunk Base to find this because... It turns out there aren't any jungles within about 10,000 blocks. We're at 9,000 blocks here, and I think this is the closest jungle to my spawn location. So we got really unlucky with the jungle placement in this world. But you know what? I'll take it. What a view. Lovely to find that jungle edge biome and finally get hold of some jungle wood, some saplings, and hopefully hidden among the branches here, some cocoa beans. I feel like we need more scaffolding in our lives as well. So really getting out to this jungle is a huge win for me. I need to throw out some of the materials in my inventory. Let's throw out the, the dirt and probably bits and pieces of like spruce wood and stuff as well. Got to make room for all of these wonderful resources resources that we're gathering for the first time in the series. Is an axe the better tool or is it a sword for, for bedrock? I never quite know, but there we go. We got ourselves some bamboo and let's get some cocoa beans and some jungle saplings before we head on home here. Alrighty, that was an adventure. Now we're back here at the storage system. Things have progressed significantly and I did bring some cocoa beans back. I did set up a nice farming pole for them here with this jungle tree trunk and then I immediately turned all the cocoa beans into brown dye so <laughs> at some point I'm gonna have to go back and get more of those but I did have enough brown dye to complete the dyes for this section here and the glass around the outside believe me this is brown it obviously looks like a more amber orangey kind of color but that right there is orange and this right here is brown. Can you tell the difference? I can't tell the difference. It's basically like the grayscale ones here actually where the difference is not necessarily a difference in color, it's a difference in darkness. Brown, I've discovered, is basically dark orange. <laughs> at least as far as the glass colors go and the light color that you get from it. But at least we've got that nice brown wall at the back to demonstrate that yes, this is in fact the brown segment. So all of the wood storage is going to be going there opposite the red and then we have black and we have grey and I think a lot of the grey on these two sections here, this grey here and then the light grey is obviously going to be where all of the stone and the basalt and all of the grey material is stored and I think that's going to be nice and accessible only a few booths down. I'm actually quite glad that the things worked out the way they did because now we have all of the material down here, the purples, the magentas, the blues, the stuff that I don't build with all that much, give or take maybe cyan looking at the roof of the house up there. I think all of this stuff is okay being down here and I'm actually going to make a staircase on the opposite side that leads out to the surface again and have this basically be a walkthrough, almost like an underground shopping mall kind of storage system. Weird though that sounds for the situation we have up here. Oh, by the way, can you tell what that is right there? The like slight, the slight shimmer and the slight wave of the texture might give it away, but it looks at, for all the world like a glass slab, doesn't it? That's actually water. <laughs> so there's a water source in there because of course the floor here is slabs of dark oak wood, 
The water sits at a really nice height in between the slabs there and the top surface here. And yes, all of this is now slabs because I had to divide up the material. I need so much smooth quartz for this. But anyway, yeah, that is that is a, a water source. But because it's so clear, thanks to the RTX texture, you can just about sort of see there are a few marks of texture on the surface of the water. But I think it looks really cool. I like that. It's almost like we've got this blob of, I don't know, clear jello in the floor that is just making the light pop a little bit more than it would if it was just recessed into the floor. I like that a lot. Having some reflectivity there is super nice. Anyway, the reason I'm stalling so much, the reason I'm talking a whole bunch about this build without getting finished is because I'm waiting for all of this quartz to smelt. I have spent so long just trawling the nether for quartz because buying it from the villager didn't really work out. He was going to start, you know, upping his quartz prices and he wasn't going to give me any more if I zombified him. I don't really have the resources right now to set up both a zombie pigman gold farm and then a piglin bartering farm once I had mo a more infinite supply of gold. And I don't really have a huge amount of gold here. I mean, I've got 14 blocks, but we all know that's not going to amount to a huge amount of quartz with all of the other stuff piglins barter. So I decided to just trawl the nether and put together the quartz blocks myself. So now we have a bunch of those smelting in each of these furnaces. Hopefully that should be enough to complete this project. I just need to put together the colored concrete for the back walls of each of these booths. And then maybe the partition walls in between each of those and making sure that all of them have smooth quartz slab floors and ceilings and oh man, it's it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's been a it's been a lot, but at the end of this we are going to have a pretty snazzy looking storage system and I do love how clean all of this looks. I did want to add in a bit of organic detail though and I've got to be honest with you I love the combination of quartz, dark oak and leaves. I think the leaves really set this off make it feel a little bit more natural and organic just kind of airy and you know <laughs> if you have house plants around to kind of oxygenate the space a little bit it sort of feels like that you know all of these clean lines and nice shiny materials kind of get offset by a little bit of organic life growing in here and I think that comes together to make a really nice feel for the entire thing. So once again, I'm going to put in a little bit more work just to get the busy work of this stuff done, lay the floors, the ceilings, the walls, all of that stuff. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I will have enough quartz. I've been crossing my fingers a lot in this episode, I feel like. Uh, we're going to have enough quartz to finish this whole thing off, and then I'll be able to give you guys the grand tour once this facility is all up and running. And finally, we are done here. Well, I say done. <laughs> we're actually not done at all because I still need to make a whole bunch of chests in order to fit them all into these individual booths. But I think we're done with the build, at least. Save for one exception, right down here, I'm going to show you guys this. I really shouldn't. I really should pretend that, like, this is all well put together and stuff, but, you know, trade secrets and whatnot. I haven't got enough smooth quartz to fill in these last two walls at the end here. And like I said, I am planning on doing another staircase that leads up the back here, but... Once again, that is going to have to go in a little bit later once I know where that's coming out and what's going to be around it. But I like the way this came together and once it's all filled in, once daylight is no longer interfering with the colours of the scene here, doesn't that look beautiful? I love looking down here and just seeing that rainbow of colours splashed along the pillars around here and it is very, very visible even though it's being kind of shone onto a fairly dark material in the form of these dark oak trees having the sea lanterns with such a bright light underneath all of those colored glass blocks makes it really stick out and i love the fact that each one has that splash of color which is just going to be reduced ever so slightly by the chests once they go in here so mission success for now i have been sleeping down here as well because creepers occasionally come up on the surface when i've been working down here for a little while so my next task is probably to do a whole bunch of tree farming because i need to make sure that all of the goods that are in these individual chests here are sorted into the correct areas like for example the nether wart blocks the crimson roots the nether rack the crimson stem that's all going to go in the red zone over here we're going to have that in this chest where you can already see I've been accumulating some materials but of course there is a ton of stuff to go in the light grey booth over here where we will end up having stone and all of its variants, clay and stuff as well because I actually have a fair amount of that. Now we end up with bits of diorite of course going over here in the white area or maybe in the light grey, I don't know because diorite obviously has that kind of TV static kind of texture to it. We've obviously got some stuff which is light grey, like wool or concrete powder and so forth. You get the idea. We just have to sort everything 
into its respective areas and then stick to that as a system. And I think that might actually be the hardest part of this for me because I'm so used to using storage just for the sake of convenience rather than for the sake of it adhering to a color palette. And there are going to be many blocks like bookshelves, for example, that I have no idea really where to put. So I'm probably going to put them in brown because they're made of wood or something like that. But I think that is where we're going to leave it for today because once again, I've made you guys watch the grass grow a couple of times already in the last couple of weeks. I think you don't want to see me sort out all of these items into the individual chests and I'm running a little bit low on time for this episode. So looking back down the corridor here, I'm going to leave it for today. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Minecraft RTX Survival. My name has been Pixaris. Please don't forget to leave a like on this episode. If you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you.